Hey, welcome. In just a few minutes, you'll learn how to build this clean, responsive sidebar UI for mobile just in Python. Let me explain how the files are structured. Here you can see the assets folder. It's used to store static files. Inside it, fonts folder stores the Poppins font and the icons folder contains custom images we'll be using in the UI. Besides these, there's the main file where we write our main code. It already contains some starter code, which you can learn more about in my previous videos. Let me show you what we get when we run this. As you can see, it gives us an empty window, and we'll start filling it in. To create the mobile size screen, we will use container control. We'll set the width to 280 and the height to 590, and then apply a background color. To manage the colors, we'll create a colors class and store the static color values in its variables. At the top of our main function, we will create a class and define a static variable called background. We'll assign it a hex color code in string format. Let's run the code and see what we get. We have a white frame at the top corner of the window. You can see a little space here, which is called padding. To remove it, we need to set it to zero. Let's set the background of the open window to black, so it becomes darker. To center the white frame, we'll set both the vertical alignment and horizontal alignment of the page to center. Now our white frame is centered. Now we're giving our frame smooth rounded corners by setting a border radius of 44. After running the code, you can see the edges are beautifully curved, giving it a cleaner and more modern look. Let's bring this layout to life. We're using a stack so we can smartly layer our sidebar and its toggle button side by side, or even on top of each other if needed. It's all about building flexible and interactive UIs. Inside our main function, we create the toggle button for the sidebar assigning it to a variable for reuse. It's just a simple icon button using Flet's beautiful icons. Then, we drop it right into our stack as the very first element setting the stage for interaction. Maybe we can wrap this button in a container. It'll give us more control over padding and margins, making it easier to position. We'll place a row inside this container. This allows the container to take the full width, giving us a perfect opportunity to align the button to the top, right corner. A simple trick to get that clean, All right, to prove this works, let me show you by running the code and checking the result. Just like I said, the icon button is now stuck to the top right corner of the white frame. To fix this, we'll add some padding to the parent container of the button. This will give it some space and make it look more balanced. Now, let's move on and style the button. We'll set the icon color by defining it in the colors class creating a static variable called icon. Initially set it to a dark gray color. But wait, I accidentally chose red. Let me fix that. There we go, it's corrected. Now, let's adjust the size of the icon to 26. Let's run it and see how our changes look. Yeah, this is exactly the result we were styling for. Now it's time to build the sidebar. We'll start by creating a custom widget that inherits from container. As usual, we define the initial method and make sure to call super.init at the beginning. Then, in the main function, we'll create an instance of this sidebar and assign it to a variable, just like we did with the button. After that, we'll add it as the next element inside the stack. 
Now here's a fun part. What do you think happens when we run it? Well, nothing. And that's as expected, because we haven't any content or styles to our sidebar yet. Let's fix that next. Alright, let's start giving our sidebar some shape. We'll begin by setting the width and height. To make it feel like it's tucked inside the white frame, we'll set the width to something slightly smaller. Let's go with 230. For the height, we'll match it to the main frame, so that stays at 590. Next, we position the sidebar at the very top, left of the frame, by setting the top and left properties to zero. And to make it visible, we'll give it a background color. For that, we'll define a new static variable in our colors class. Let's name it background container. This will be a soft, light gray color, just enough to separate it visually from the white frame. Now, let me run it and show you what we've got so far. Great. So now we've got this clean, white sidebar on the left side, nicely taking up most of the frame. This is just the initial static view, and it's super helpful, we're laying the foundation, first before making it dynamic later. Now it's time to start adding actual content to the body of the sidebar. It's inherited from container. And inside that, we'll place a column. This will help us stack elements vertically. The sidebar's body will have two main sections, the profile info block at the top. The navigation items below it. Let's begin with the profile info section. Alright, so for the profile info section, we're kicking things off by adding the user's profile image. We'll use the image control for this. Set the source path to our image file. Remember, we already have a profile image inside the assets folder. So that's what we'll point to. Set its width to 70, and to make it perfectly round, we'll give it a border radius of 360. This will turn any square image into a nice. Okay, let's run the code and see how it looks. Profile picture appears left at the top of the sidebar, centered and smoothly rounded, just the way we want it. Now to keep things looking neat and not cramped, and we don't want it sticking to the edges of the sidebar. So inside the container, we'll add some padding especially from the top, left and right, to give the image some breathing room and center it more nicely. Once we do that and run the app, you'll notice the image sits comfortably with space around it. Let's add the name and surname part of the profile info right under the profile image. We'll use the text control for this. As an example, I'm going to use the name Walter Willian. Next, we'll give this text a proper color using our colors class. Right now, have a foreground color defined. So let's go ahead and add one. We'll call it foreground. Now let's style the text. We'll set the font size to 14, make it bold by setting the weight to 700. And finally, use a clean, font-like Poppins. This gives our profile info a clean and polished look. We already have the Poppins font inside our fonts folder. But here's something important to keep in mind. Just having the font file isn't enough. We need to register it with the page. So after Flet knows to use it. To do that we'll use the fonts property of the page. It takes a dictionary, where the key is the font family name, and the value is the path to the folder that contains the font files. And now, let's run it and see what we get. There we go. A nice clean look with our custom styling in place. Now let's move on to the next step just below the profile name. Add a short description, like the user's profession or role. We'll use another text control here, just like before. The only difference. We'll make the text a bit lighter by setting a lower font weight so it doesn't compete visually with the name above. And here's how it looks once we add that. Next, we'll add some spacing to the column holding these elements. Let's set the spacing to 5, so the items are nicely separated and easy to read.
it's coming together nicely. Now, we've finished the profile info section of the sidebar. Let's move on to the second part, located below it. To separate them, we'll use a divider. We'll set its color to the background value from the colors class. This will give it a light white appearance. When we run the code, we'll be able to see the result clearly. Below the divider, we'll create a container, just like the one above. We'll add a column as its child. This column will hold the second section of the sidebar, which contains the page buttons. Inside the column, we'll start by creating one button as an example. This button will be made using a container, and the button's container will use a row to align the icon and text in a single line. To do this, we'll use the image control. For the button icon, we'll use one of the images from our icons folder and set the image width to 20 for a nice and mini look. Next to the icon, we'll add a label using the text control. We'll set the font family to Poppins, size to 14. Use the foreground color from our colors class. Now to make sure our button doesn't stick to the one below it, add bottom padding to the row's parent container. And just like we did with the profile info section, add some padding around the whole button section. But this time, we'll skip the top padding. Let's see what we got. Smooth, functional, and visually balanced. Just how we like it. Now, to avoid rewriting all that code every time we want to add a new button, we're going to convert it into a custom control by creating a new class. Just like before, this class will inherit from container and will define the init method. Inside it we'll make sure to call the super.init first. Then, we'll copy the current content, the layout with the icon and text, into self content just like we had before. But this time, instead of hard coding values, we'll make the class dynamic by accepting the icon path and label text as parameters. These parameters will allow us to easily customize each button. We'll replace hard coded values with these variables throughout the component. As a result, we'll be able to create clean buttons with just a single line of code, each with its own icon and label. Now, all we have to do is go down to our sidebar and use this new custom control to insert a list of buttons inside the column. To add all the buttons, simply duplicate this control and change the parameters for each one. Let's run the code. Now we can see the full appearance of our sidebar. Next, we need to make it slide in when the button is clicked. To achieve this, we need to assign an on click parameter to our toggle button. This parameter will receive a function that gets triggered whenever the button is clicked. We'll define this function inside the main function, so we can easily modify the sidebar from within. The function will accept an event value, and inside it, we'll write a condition. If the sidebar's left position is not equal to zero, then we set it to zero. Additionally, we'll make the toggle button itself invisible by setting its visible property to false. Finally, we'll call the update method for both controls to apply the changes. One more thing, 
we'll set the sidebar's default left position to minus 2080, so it stays hidden before the button is clicked. And for the sliding animation, apply animated position using Flet's animation feature with a 15 hundreds delay in animation. Animation curve. Now, let's run the final result and see how it looks. As you can see, we've successfully achieved the desired result. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope this was helpful, and feel free to explore more ideas and customize it to fit your own project.